Morning, Trev. Thanks for taking my call. I was just wondering if we could talk about um, opening up the sawmill in the spring. The snow's starting to thaw, days are starting to get a little warmer, you know, I'm starting to get itchy about getting the, some logs done up. Um, what's your advice? Should I just fire it up and start cutting, or is there a better temperature to wait for? What are my checklists? What do I, what do I do first? All right, so we're at the mill. It is also waking up from being in the winter. So, you know, it's kind of like getting it ready right after you built it. I mean, you're gonna need to double check everything, right? You're gonna wanna lay some levels across the bunks left and right, and you're gonna wanna go forward and back, make sure you don't have a rake on it, you know, from start to finish. Um, you're gonna wanna pull the covers, of course, grease the band wheels, give everything a spin, take the blade off, um, turn everything by hand, reset your guides, um, double check all of that. Um, depending on when you last serviced it, uh, a lot of people will start off servicing um, first thing just so that they can get on a, on a solid schedule because you know, last year's product's gonna be full of condensation and, and uh, you know, maybe some uh, stuff in there that you don't want. You know, probably not world ending if, if the service was done late in the fall. You could probably run it 10, 20 hours and not get too worried about it. Um, that's, uh, that's about where I would tell you you should be able to go. You should be able to pull the covers off, grease the band wheels, spin everything by hand, get a new blade on it, double check your guides, and uh, check all your levels, and uh, fire it up. You should be ready to go. Thanks, Trevor. That's perfect. That's a great checklist. I'm going to go ahead and do those now. I did do an oil change uh, last fall. I think I cut like two board, two logs after that. So it will be nice and clean, but we'll check it anyway. And I'll show you what it looks like there. Um, nothing more really to check on this side, other than that there's no corrosion on your battery box and that it looks like nobody made a nest or anything inside your engine or anywhere in there. Okay, everything looks good on this side. Let's put our key on. So we are ready to go. We're not gonna fire up, I just want it there. Okay, next side. Okay, so I've removed the fenders off uh, both of the wheels because the carriage won't pass without it. So please remember that if you get stuck, take your fenders off. Okay, I'm gonna pull it forward so we can look at the band wheels and everything inside. Might as well check the engine oil while we're here. Get it. Forget about the engine. Perfect. Perfect level, nice and clean. So we're gonna item my gloves. We're gonna take this old blade off, check the band wheels, check the belt, grease the band wheels, put a new blade on. check the belt first just uh, because it's a nice easy check and then we can move on from there. So uh, Trevor has given me great advice before and you can see that video in one of our episodes from from the stump uh, but his quick check was take your two fingers your thumb and your first finger grab your belt like this right in the middle and turn it 90 degrees. If you can see the V-groove, but you can't turn it any further, like up towards the sky, you have the right tension on that belt.
Okay, now we're just going to track this, make sure everybody's running correctly. Perfect. Sounds great. Okay, and another little side check. Tiny bit of wiggle room, but well within tolerance. Okay, we'll put some grease on this band wheel and then this side will be done. Okay, I'm going to give her a little bit more just to make sure I don't see any water or anything funky come out of here. If so, just keep pumping and turning until it's all good grease coming out the top. Amazing. Okay. going to be a little more play on here because there's no tension on this axle so this is absolutely normal you should be able to get your hands in behind all the way around okay Okay, because that's the idle wheel, I can just spin it and pump at the same time. It's nice, you know, then that whole bearing is packed. These blades are extremely sharp. Please always be wearing gloves and you should probably have your safety glasses on. It, things only cut you and hurt you when you least expect it. So like any tool, pay attention and you'll be safe. Now I took the advice of Trevor and run my ceramics really, really tight. I drop them almost right down onto the blade and then tighten the bottom one first, then the top one. They run really slick. I've had no problems cutting hard or soft wood. Uh, love that trick, love that tip. Thanks Trev. Trevor showed us what to watch for when we're tightening down the T-handle but it's so important, it's worth repeating. Okay, so watch the top of the blade near the belt. And I'll, sh I'll tell you when we start our count on the T-handle. Oh, you see it move? See it move? Right there. So, as soon as you watch it come flat, then you set level on your T-handle, then you can start your count. So again, don't start your count while it's up here because there's not enough pressure on that spring. But once you see it move, now you can level out that T-handle and start your count. So let's put six full turns on this right now. Okay, I like to run my blades with only just a little bit of the tooth showing. So you can see this tooth right here, you see that weld mark or cut line? Okay, so it is what I use to a guide on my belt on my band wheel, okay? And we're gonna watch it track. Make sure that blade's not moving forward or backward. We are good, 100%. Fuel on. A 
Well, let's test the crank out. Make sure everybody sounds good. Oh, we gotta put water in the water jug. Then we can cut. The reason I was passing the carriage up and down so often is I was listening um, for the T track, the track that uh, the carriage runs on. Make sure no little doo -doo or any other sounds to let me know that something's loose and I need to correct it or adjust it or at least get my attention on it. So a lot of that is just listening. Um, again, when you assemble your Norwood sawmill, you become your technician. I am only able to know what this saw is supposed to do because I put it together myself. Let's get a log on there. I know some of you are saying, that's not a log, that's a stick. You're right, but it's a black walnut stick, and so I'm going to cut it up. Cutting boards, hangers, oh, gorgeous. I know you can't see the grains yet, but trust me, they're absolutely breathtaking. Now those I cut at one inch, and this one I left at two. I want it a little bit thicker because I'm going to run it through my planer on the back side and just take off the material once it's dry. But uh, look at that. It's like a tree within a tree. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks for that checklist. Now I feel way more confident running my sawmill in the spring.